Here we are, full scale fixes. We are going to replace, or not replace, I guess, but change out this cooler hose. And by cooler hose, I mean the transmission line cooler hose. That's right here. You can see it's all wet. Um, basically, this is a common problem with the JKs. The crimps go bad and start to leak. Um, there's two sets of them. I'll try to show you guys a better view. So you can see there's two per side, about the same size. And that's the only rubber part of this line. It goes up to right there. But if we follow it down all the way under here, you can see it runs all the way back to right there. So you have the bottom one there and then the other one's just right above that one. Um, but this is all usually fine. The only issues you have is with that front rubber hose section. So what I'm going to do instead of buying this whole part, which I'll leave a link in the description below. I think it's about 80 bucks or something on Amazon. You can find them probably somewhere else cheaper, but you can get the assembly part of it, the whole thing, but it doesn't come with the actual screw parts there. You'll take that plastic piece off with the clip and that end will pop out of them. And that's on all four sides. Um, but in this case, I'm going to try to save the 80 or 90 bucks and use this foot of I think it's 3 8 hose. I'll look at it again, but I got this from AutoZone. The lady chopped off a foot for me, and it was only 235. So under three bucks, I got hose clamps already. So I'm going to try to repair that and save a bunch of money rather than buy the whole assembly when it's just those crimps that are bad. So um, I'll go over this hose again in a minute, and um, going to get some tools, get some picks get the drum already and I'll show you what I'm using to do this and we'll get into it. In this job I'm going to end up using uh, just a creeper to go underneath. Uh, I'm going to take the whole line out just to make it easier for myself. If you want you could probably cut it and do it all underneath and not remove anything but just for the sake of Removing it for you guys, so if you do want to do that to get the whole new line, that video will help, but also be easier to film and do it out here in general. So um, I'm going to be using Dremel to cut the old crimps off. I'm just using 420 Dremel cutoff wheel. Got this at Lowe's, I think for like five bucks, a pack of 20. So. I'll be using that, whatever cutoff wheel method you're looking to do, use that. Uh, this I'm going to use to cut the hose. If you got a hose cutter, great, but I don't, so I'm just going to use that. And then a pick. I've seen this used to get the little plastic covers off, and as well as get the uh, little clips out, because you got a little clip that you push out, and that's what releases the hose. Um, also, I'm going to bring some needle nose pliers and a flathead just in case I can't get it off of the pick just to kind of help out but gloves and then 3 8 inch 9.5 millimeter that's the hose size I think AutoZone the part number for this was like I think 900 105 I think um, it's listed up as like a power steering hose I think but it comes up at, under uh, transmission cooler hose for this so um, the one AutoZone I went to didn't offer a foot of this or anything they wanted you to pay the 15 bucks for the whole thing the other one I went to she said she just chop off a foot or two whatever I needed so instead of paying the 15 bucks for a whole roll I got this for a couple bucks so that was a nice saver this she ended up cutting it at 13 inches um, you guys will know by the end of the video if that was enough or if I have to go get some more. But those are the tools I'm going to use. Anything I add, I'll just let you guys know as I'm doing it. And I'm going to start by 
coming up here, I think, and working on getting the hoses disconnected from up here first. All right, folks, hope you can see here. I just uh, got a flathead underneath the plastic here. I just started working it. There we go. So, put the flathead in, worked it up a little bit, and then just finished it with the pick. Alright, so before I go any further with that one, I'm just going to get this cap off down here. Kind of a tight squeeze. There we go. I'm just putting it in and then using the uh, support. There's a little body support up here. I'm using that to uh, pry out with. Alright guys, so just fiddling with it. I'm pretty much going to try to get the pick on that back side. It focuses. Get the pick on the back side and try to scoop under that ring and uh, show you guys on film. I put just a little bit of a PB blaster, some penetrating oil on the rings to help them. They're a little rusty looking. Um, so let's see if we can get this thing off. This is a tiny pick. Um, you might have better luck with a bigger one. But let's see. I got it moving a bit, so that was a bonus. I almost got under it the one time. The idea is to try to get under that top part so if you guys can't see. Just trying to get at least one caught on camera for you guys can you know kind of what's going on. Oh. So I, I caught it a little bit. Just gotta try to get the pig under it. Or inside of it coming from the top so gonna probably try to put you guys down just to do this because it is hard to film and do at the same time but there we go got it so you see that right there you work like this and you try to angle this pick down and get inside of it and then you pull it toward you so let me go ahead and pull this off okay that's what it looks like you're just trying to get inside that bottom lip and hook it and then just pull it out I'm gonna do the same for the bottom off camera and then we're gonna head to under the Jeep and then try to get it from there um, if you want to you can turn this tire to the left and give you a little bit more room to work with then this line should just pull out. I'm going to wait because I don't want it leaking uh, transmission fluid everywhere right now. So I'm going to leave it be, get this other one out, and then we'll go underneath, get those out, and then we'll start uh, popping those off. This is back underneath. Um, I didn't show showing you all this process because it's pretty tight down here, but all you're going to do is follow your lines like I showed you earlier. And you see the one goes right here, which I move move that cap off. Uh, flathead, I did throw. Let me get some light there. I did throw some PB blast on there. That one's soaking. And then if you follow the other one up top here, got the plastic cap off. And then I actually have that clip. If we can get up there. That clip, you can see it pulled off almost all the way. That one was facing that way to pull off. Not sure about this bottom one, but same with the one up front there. That second one I pulled off. There we go. That bottom line was actually facing the opposite way of the other one. So clips might not be the same uh, pointing like direct direction wise, but just uh, keep feeling around, try to see. Try different angles if you're not getting anything, it should pop off. But once I got the one side kind of off, I grabbed the other pick I had and just put it in between so I didn't lose it. 
and just worked it off. I'll probably just grab the needle nose now and grab that piece off. And then, um, yep, then I'll work on this bottom one and try to get that one off. And then we'll go ahead and pull this line out. So, ran into a dilemma um, after battling getting this bottom clip off, which was kind of rusted on. I got one side started and the other one still wouldn't pull off, so it had to work it off, but it came off. But now, I don't know if you can see with the light, but this top one feels like I could just pop it out like I should be able to but this bottom one is like seized in there pretty bad it doesn't move at all at the base and I really am scared of breaking it so I'm trying to do what I can I tried even loosening this uh, bolt nut but uh, that doesn't move at all um, with the crescent wrench I don't have a big enough box uh, for it um, try to just tap in with a hammer too to shake off you know maybe some rust but it's looking like I'm going to have to leave these two attached and then just take off that one down there, those two, and just repair it like that because this just is uh, stuck on there. And since I'm not replacing the whole thing actually, and I just want to take it off to make it easier, I'd rather not risk breaking it um, if I don't have to. So I'm going to work on it a little bit more, but... Um, it's not looking good so stay tuned and we will see in a second for you guys if I move down and just take the front off and work on it that way or if we can get this back off too there right, guys not gonna lie it's been a struggle um, to show you what those clips look like if I haven't yet um, so I couldn't get the lines on the transmission that bottom one to budge at all and it's, it looks pretty crusty in there. Another one up here. These two weren't the easiest. Top one, a little bit better, but that bottom one is pretty crusty and took some work. Um, if that focuses. So, just to give you an idea, I ended up reaching my one hand behind the uh, wheel well liner here. And grabbed the back of the hose kind of where the crimp is in the front and I was shaking it moving it back and forth while taking this long screwdriver flathead and on each of these I was resting against the uh, body mount uh, bracket right there and just prying this way while shaking it in different directions trying to get it break loose and then uh, this one was really tough, but finally got that broke loose, so I can't imagine getting those ones underneath. Um, depends where you live. Might not be rusty. Could be a lot easier, but I did these two still. A, to show you, but B, I'm hoping I can get enough of it to move down so I can uh, cut it easier and replace those hoses. So just a quick glimpse into that. And then these clips, you can just put in after you get those out because this is just like a quick release thing. So when you go to put the hoses back in, they just slide right on. So um, then don't forget you will need hose clamps. I didn't mention that before, but you'll need eight total because we're going to do uh, two per side. So um, you're going to need four on each line. And I'll show you the sizes I'm using when I get to that point. I got this at Harbor Freight a while ago for like five bucks. Alright guys, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, probably will only film just a little bit, like one side maybe, show you what I'm doing, um, just because it's hard to get under here now, but as I said before, basically just going to try to gently cut this open a little bit and then see if I can peel it off, if not I'll uh, Cut a little bit on the other side. To help pull us down, A to help get more clearance, but B to help you guys see a little bit easier if it's pulled down. My hand's out in the way.
just spraying brake clean just to try to get a better picture here. See what's going on, what more I can cut. Because I just don't want to cut too much into the uh, fitting area because I don't want to damage that at all. So. All right guys, as you can see, I got this end off, just using the snips and twisting and pulling it off. I'm gonna clean up that little debris there. This is just a piece of saran wrap I stuck in there, just to slow down the uh, transmission fluid from coming out. And now I'm gonna take the other end because I was able just to pull it off. Now I can easily uh, cut this one off and re uh, do this line and I'll pop it up there and put the hose clamps on that side. So on this one, I just went and cut on each half, so maybe make it a little bit easier. I'm pretty sure these crimped ends seat inside a groove there, so it makes it a little bit harder to get out. that half but if you guys can see there's a little bit of metal in there so that's what uh keeps getting caught on I think because you can't really cut that piece shouldn't matter for uh doing what we're doing because we're just going to clamp two clamps down so that lip shouldn't matter to clean out but we'll see this one off. You can see it comes cleanly off after that. And then here I just clean up that little area. And then at least now that I have it off I can also take a wire wheel and clean that rust off up there and uh, get that back to together. So that's the original 3 8 inch. I'm just going to basically run it along. If you want, you can get a paint marker or something and mark it. And I'm just going to cut it a little bit longer than it says. And we should be good. So I'm going to cut it about right there. Just make sure you have a sharp blade when doing this as well. Now this will leave me plenty to work with because I had a little blue line I made earlier but now I got extra on top of it so should be good. Ideally a good pair of shears would be a nicer actual hose cutter but this is what it is. Now we are just simply going to find the best clamps for these. Which I know in this pack most of them only come with uh, like four, five there, four, ten, so they vary in how many you get in the Harbor Freight Pack. These aren't the best clamps either, so if you want, uh, go splurge on some better ones. But, um, these I'm guessing 
or maybe the seven eighths or something. They might put halves on the other ones. But. Same thing on the second one. Alright, I got those two on. I'm going to go ahead and wire wheel this real quick and then slap that up there and I'll show you guys that after I'm done. And then pretty much uh, I'll work on the other one off camera again, get that finished and then wrap up the video for you guys since it's all the same after this. The hoses are on. I just need to get this last clip on. This top one up here. Um, I did the bottom one already. It looks like they are, if you guys could see, right at the tip here, there's a slit. There's three of those all the way around. So as long as you get your clip, the two ends, and then that middle part in the slot, you should be good. Um, this one I'm just going to head straight on with, like that. You just pop it in, so I'm going to show you guys real quick on camera, and then we should be able to pop those two lines back in. All right, well, the plan was to show you guys, but I think my hand's just going to be in the way, so I'm going to just knock it out real quick. You see that little corner right there? Just want to make sure, go in there. Make sure it's in all the way. There we go. Now we should be able to uh, pop those lines back on. The um, one with the white cap is going to go on top, and then the one with the black cap will be going to the bottom. So it's the uh, next morning. Left the light on in there for you guys. I don't know what's going on, but reconnecting these lines was a pain in the ass. So decided to um because i thought i had the top one in finally last night and you want to make sure it's in there so i pried on it see if it'd pull out and it did so decided to hang my hat up last night it's getting late started the fresh day today and um i decided to take um bottom one out too but top one i took the ring out the little clip and looked at it checked everything seemed fine and I uh, took two attempts, but the second time I pretty much just wiggle back and forth the line with one hand and then you push down on the uh, top of it there with the other hand. And that one finally clicked. I don't know what happened. That one finally went in. And then um, I also was using a long screwdriver and a block and just kind of trying to use that to pry it into with more leverage it's tight in there um, but the bottom one was the one I thought would be the biggest problem because it's so rusty and I decided to do the same uh, take it all the way out pull the clip off and, but this time because you can see on the little slots you can see the lip of the line where it needs to go past it's just like just that little uh, end that needs to go past then the clip would retain it you can see it in the slot, so I left the clip out and kept pushing it until I seen it past that. So it, I just threw the clip in, it locked in in place. Good to go there now. Um, pull my light out of there. But yeah, I almost would say if those are kind of giving you pain getting off, just leave them and try to do the repair without them just to save you the headache possibly that I went through. But they are on now, so let's go underneath the car. So here's underneath, I cleaned it up a bit, just threw some brake clean on a rag, wiped it down so I can see anything leaking out, uh, tightened everything the best I could, I used the 8mm socket on these, and then the hard to reach ones, I had a 8mm box wrench, and got them pretty tight, and then figured if it's leaking I'll you know, tighten them more and hopefully it stops, but that's what those are looking like now. And then under here, I forgot to mention, you guys could also do what I did here. This little clip just has that little end piece that sits on that bolt. This just 
retains it in place better. So you can always, I took just a screwdriver and wedged it down and it just pops off, it's plastic. Um, just give me a little bit more working room, but other than that, like I showed you already, that's all back in place and we're ready to fire this thing up. There's a back shot of it if you're interested. Just uh, two clamps on each side. So I had the hood open, but there should be no tools up here. I just had it open. Um, so that's all good. Let's move the brake clean. Let me turn the tire back. Cross the fingers, this fix works because 235 compared to 88 bucks. It's a lot cheaper. So far so good, no leakage I see. I got a pressure washer coming next week or this week, so I plan on just cleaning all this up officially. Got some degreaser too I'll use, but this has been leaking since I've had it, so this has just always been well lubricated with transmission fluid. Um, I'm gonna want to get this up to temperature and then uh, check a dipstick, make sure you are topped off or whatever, and then um, yeah. Make sure you're topped off. These are ATF plus four. And uh, pretty much it. I'm not sure older or newer Jeeps what they're taking, but that's what this one is. But all seems well, so I will let this warm up. Go through the gears as well. I think you go from uh, park all the way through and then back to neutral and then put the parking brake on and then check your fluid. So. Alright, thanks for watching. Please give this a thumbs up. Any comments or questions, please leave them in the box below. And check out the links in the description. I'll see you guys next time.